YouTube channel, $900 luxury yacht. Today's episode, the reality of life aboard a 27-foot boat, or first-person view breakfast at Boca Chida Key. This is the V berth. This is where I sleep. And this is where I start every day that I'm aboard the boat. The carver has a spacious and luxurious cabin for a boat its size. The one downside which kind of is unavoidable in a boat this size is that you have to climb over the sofa to get in or out of the V berth, which is a very minor inconvenience as far as I'm concerned because the cabin is really very nicely laid out and spacious for a boat of this size. In the mornings I have found that I can't run the microwave or the coffee maker from the solar because the batteries have been depleted during the night by running the appliances. As a matter of fact, last night I had to run the generator. And since I started it and then went back to sleep, the generator ran until it ran out of gas. So before I can cook my breakfast this morning, I have to fuel the generator and get it running so that I can use it to power the microwave and the coffee maker. The solar panels are making enough power at the moment to run everything other than the microwave and coffee maker. And I'll be able to run the microwave for dinner, no problem, because the batteries will have picked up a good charge during the day. But at breakfast, most of the charge is depleted from the batteries, and I can't run the microwave on battery power. So I have to use the generator. And this is a day that I wound up doing several things twice. I kind of like it when the jerry can is half empty because it's easy to hold it up like this. But the downside this time is there wasn't quite enough gas to fill up the generator. And since I've got the generator half out of its doghouse, I might as well fill it up all the way while I'm doing this. So I've sped up the part where I'm filling it the rest of the way from a second jerry can because that really looks exactly the same as the first jerry can did. And this way the video is less boring than it might otherwise be. So now I turn on the choke and usually one or two pulls will start the generator. So I turn the choke off and this doghouse that I made for the generator is designed to have those side panels propped open like that so that there's enough airflow to prevent the generator from overheating. It's air cooled so it needs a lot of airflow. But the doghouse lets it stay outside and I don't have to bring it in the cabin all the time. So now all the appliances on the boat are running from the generator. Coffee is first thing. That's important. I'm actually half asleep until I have my coffee in the morning. So I guess it's kind of nice to get a bunch of the chores out of the way before I have my coffee. 
because they get done sort of semi on autopilot and I can halfway sleep through the drudgery of getting everything ready to start my day. Everything, coffee, sugar, kind of everything has to be sealed up tight here because of the humidity. And I've got this theory about coffee. I think that if you pile it up along the edges of the little basket where the water has to go through to go out into the little pot down below, that the coffee's in the way of the water going out so it kind of soaks everything out of the coffee that you could soak out. Now, I have not done an experiment where I made several pots of coffee one way and several pots the other and then compared them. This is just my idea based on how I'm imagining the water soaking through the coffee grounds. You'll hear the generator change its tone when the coffee maker starts. That's because it has to run faster to make more power for the load that the coffee maker is putting on. And I use this little glass bowl to cook my breakfast sausages in the microwave. Oh, yeah, this is the day where I had to do several things twice. Normally I have five or six of these breakfast sausages, and that was the last one in the bag, so I've sped up the part about opening another bag because it looks identical to when I opened the first bag. Now the bag I'm going to save, I save this bag and also the bags my groceries came in and they're all in this little coffee can here on the counter that is a trash can for me. So what I'll do when I have trash is I'll put it in there until the innermost bag is full and then I'll seal it up and carry the trash ashore with me when I go to the mainland. So that sausage bag will hold trash and also the bags that the groceries came in will take trash out. It can go out in the same bag it came in with. And this jerry can is empty. So now that I'm thinking about it, I might as well refill it. This storage bin on the front of the boat, the, the one bin with four straps holding the lid on, holds two 25-gallon fuel tanks. And they were put on the boat to extend its range so that it could travel longer distances over open ocean to get to more remote places. And there's a special electric fuel pump that's plumbed into these two tanks and a switch at the helm so I can just turn on a switch and pump this 50 gallons of extra gas into the main tanks and I can do that while I'm driving the boat so the boat can actually refill itself while crossing open ocean. But on this shakedown cruise, I'm not going to need the extra range. And I have been using the generator a lot more than I have been, than, than I had planned to. So, I can siphon gas out of these tanks and refill the jerry cans that I use to fill the generator. This is a nice tool. I think it's called a slap siphon or something like that. 
And it has a little one-way valve with like a marble in it at the bottom where you, that you put in the tank and then bump it up and down like I did. And it lets gas in the tube but not out. So it starts the siphon by itself, which is a lot nicer than sucking on the tube, especially when siphoning gasoline. Now the sound of the generator changed, which indicated that the coffee maker had changed modes and had finished brewing and just had the little hot plate on. You can hear the generator rev up when the microwave starts and I had unplugged the coffee maker because I didn't want the little hot plate on it running when I ran the microwave. Now I've got a siphon running with gasoline so I want to get back here pretty fast, but as long as the jerry can didn't overflow, there's not really a problem. I hold the hose up just to help the last bit of gas drain out of the hose into the jerry can. And now that the big fuel tank is closed up, I can retrieve my jerry can, which is most of the way full now. And since I have an open container of gas, the first priority is to get the lid on that so that it's stable and safe. And now that that's safe, I can put the lid back on this container with the extra fuel tanks. These storage bins are made out of Nidacore, a honeycomb core product for fiberglass. And they only have one layer of fiberglass on each side. But that makes them plenty strong for their purpose here and extremely light. They probably only weigh about 20% of what these same structures would weigh if they were made out of, say, plywood or some more conventional building material. So now I've got this full jerry can of gas that I can put next to the generator. And since the generator isn't racing anymore, my sausages should be ready. I love this little coffee cup. It's vacuum insulated so the coffee stays hot for a long time. And it's short and wide at the base. So it's very unlikely to tip over. And it also has soft rubber on the bottom so it doesn't slide around if the boat rocks. I like to put half and half in my coffee. It's like half cream and half milk. And you can get it at the grocery store here, but there are no shelf-stable versions of it. So what I've found is that I can get heavy cream in a can like this, and I scoop some of that out into my coffee. And I try to stir it up. It doesn't dissolve very well even with the coffee being hot. It's surprising. And then I have some of this Parmalat milk that I add. And between the cream and the milk, it kind of tastes like half and half. The whole idea of the boat is that I want to be able to go to remote places and stay there for an entire summer. 
so I don't have enough refrigeration to take all the half and half with me. But I only need the opened containers of cream and Parmalat milk in the refrigerator. And I can have a lot more of it on board in unopened containers. Another nice thing about this coffee cup is that it has a waterproof lid that screws on. And the best way to get the cream to mix with the coffee is to shake it up. So I'm going to shake my coffee all the way from the boat to the gazebo. The gazebo is where I like to have breakfast or end dinner if the weather is nice enough. Even though it's early in the day and the roof isn't providing shade for the picnic tables, there's always a few places to sit in the shade behind the vertical columns that hold the roof up. The gazebo is really the nicest spot on the island to hang out. You get a nice breeze either across the harbor or coming in off of the bay because it's out on this point between the harbor and the bay. There's always a nice breeze out there and with the shade of the gazebo it's just really very nice. And here are my breakfast sausages. So they're all cooked and nice and hot, ready for me to eat them. And the walk back out to the gazebo from the boat looks about like the walk out with the coffee, except I'm not shaking the breakfast sausages. This is just the most wonderful spot to have breakfast. It has such a spectacular view of the bay, palm trees, the lighthouse. So my breakfast is all laid out on the table there, but I still have a few things that I need to do back at the boat. Now that I'm through using the coffee maker and the microwave, oh, that's a long jump. Oh. There, see, I made it. Now that I'm through with the microwave and the coffee maker, I don't need the generator. So I unplug the load first before shutting off the generator. And this great big heavy-duty extension cord runs pretty much every appliance on the boat. So it's easy to switch from generator power to the solar power. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm turning on the inverter that's connected to the batteries that the solar panels charge and plugging in. And now everything on the boat, the refrigerator, the freezer, the lights, the chargers for the different devices, and the fans are all running from solar power. These two fans were originally desk fans, and I cut off the base that lets them sit on the desk and made those square plates that hold the fans out of something called King Starboard. It's a plastic building material that's sold in sheets of different thicknesses. I think this is half inch. And it's like, you use it like plywood except it's much nicer. It has a nicer finish. It will never rot. It won't absorb, absorb water. It's resistant to oils and fuel and 
pretty much anything you could spill on it. That cross piece, that white board going across, has two bolts that are like pins that stick up and two holes in that white panel holding the fan have to go over those bolts to hold it in place. You can see because I'll do the same process on the other overhead hatch. So there's the board with the two bolts sticking upward from it and it goes across the opening of the hatch and there's the fan in the plastic panel that I made to fit the hatch and I got it jammed in there it has to go through the hatch diagonally I should know that. And so there's that cross piece, that board with the two bolts. And I just have to get the two holes in the board holding the, the flat plate holding the board over the bolts. And now I'm done. Now that I'm running on solar power, I can charge my phone. Oh yeah, this is the day where I had to do several things twice. So, now the fans are running. Oh yeah, that is the right time and temperature. The fans will keep it at a reasonable temperature during the day. It's best to spend much of the day in the water or doing things ashore and then spend the evenings in the boat. And the wind is coming off of the bay this morning. So I'll face that way while having breakfast. And I have to pull the boat in close to the dock because it tends to float away from the dock out on the end of its dock lines when the wind is coming from that way, which is nice because it's not constantly bumping up against the dock. And this is it, my breakfast at Boca Chida Key, in the shade, in the breeze, in the gazebo, with a beautiful view of Biscayne Bay. Now, if I don't already have plans for the day, what I usually do while I'm eating breakfast is think about what I'm going to do after breakfast. I try to find something interesting to do every day. Either snorkeling or exploring or many times it's something photography related. So today I'm going to set out a camera and do a time lapse of the city of Miami. That's not a mountain on the horizon. Those are the tall buildings in downtown Miami. And the ground level is actually over the horizon from here. But you can see the tall buildings sticking up well above the horizon. And that's just it for breakfast at Boca Chidaquee.